hello. Uh, welcome to another episode of From Garage to Growth. And uh, this is a podcast where we venture into the world of entrepreneurship. And on today's episode, uh, we have a guest, Isabella, and she's a, an entrepreneur. And uh, she ha- she's a founder of the Bell Art Gallery and Soul Bursary. Uh, and and uh, Isabella's adventures are rooted in East African culture and celebrate the diversity within East African culture. So to kick things off, I would like to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and kind of give uh, an idea of how you got inspired to get into the entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem to a degree. Yeah, Hi, so I am Isabella Susan Zai. Um, I was born in Kenya, raised a little bit in Uganda, and then we moved to Germany. Um, I'm the founder of Soil Brossery and Bell Art Gallery, and we're based here in Berlin. Okay. Uh, so to kick start off the questions, uh, so Isabella, in your journey as an entrepreneur, uh, it's it's not usually easy. Like entrepreneurship is not uh, a, an easy journey to go to. What were some of the challenges that you faced when you first started off your journey? Um, there's a lot of challenges. First, I'm not coming from a business kind of background, you know, entrepreneurship in my family at all. So like I didn't really have this kind of um inspiration or really go to support like some other people may have so that was a big thing like to um overcome your fears that to jump this let me become an entrepreneur um that was the biggest challenge first um so it was more of a mind thing once i overcame that um the challenge is to be seen as a black woman in germany trying to um sell african art and trying to sell um, East African food. Um, so that's a challenge for us because East Africa is not really known like that, our food. Mm-hmm. Um, when you say, oh, I, I do catering business in East African food, what you get to hear is, oh, jollof rice, yes. fufu. And I was like, yeah, we have similar dishes, but um, they're definitely different. So um, those are like the challenges to start with. And then um, obviously the others, accessing capital, um, finding mentors, finding a network, communities where people are open really to advise and share the experiences. Um, those have been my challenges, mm-hmm. especially especially in the Black community, I must say, really. There are few people who are really out there um, supporting the Black community. But when I think about it, most of the people who've been supporting me have been not, not African. Yeah, is it is that more because there isn't a community that's black orientated that cater to supporting uh, African startups, or is it more in sense of most of the capital is around like uh, white centric environment? A little bit of both. Most of the capital now, especially in Berlin, is about startups and technology, and there's a little bit money left about diversity, women. Um, so that's a bit of the challenge, but also the other is um, people don't want to support you, I think, mm-hmm. yeah. um, which is really sad. Um, so that's been the challenge or when they see you. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's been the challenge, for, in my opinion, for me, at least. Yeah. And, but there have also been brothers and sisters out there who are like, yeah, go for it. And those are my biggest cheerleaders, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm pushing because, yeah, when, it, when I'm down and I speak to them, they, they, they uplift me. And I am lucky that they're also very knowledgeable and I'm also lucky that they're also doing the same thing. So they're entrepreneurs in their own rights. Yeah. So um, it's been a blessing. So I've been, like, kind of piggybacking off them. Yeah, sharing knowledge. Sharing knowledge and um, creating our little community, which is growing. But yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going to more touch on the businesses themselves. Yeah. Uh, so in your journey with Bola Art Gallery, you have been fostering this uh, talent of local artists, uh, most more in sense of African local artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how do you go about identifying those artists and selecting them and showcasing their work here in Berlin? Yeah. So the inspiration behind Bell Art Gallery is... Um, to showcase the the talent of African local artists because um, the majority of them are self-taught. This is like a talent you're born with. And um, unfortunately, they do not have access to visibility, to platforms where they can share their work and be able to live off that. Um, so when I was in Uganda one day, I was looking for art and then I saw this guy on the road selling his art and I, I literally fell in love and we started talking. 
And here he was telling me this is what he lives off, but it's the challenges behind it because I was thinking he's going to not take me to his gallery and I'm going to have other pieces to choose from. But no, he goes like, yeah, when I get some money, um, I support my family and then I buy some equipment so that I can, you know, paint and resell. And this is how he was living off. And I felt really sad. So I ordered a couple um, art of him. When I came back, it really started stick to like, in my head and I was like oh this is a niche and everybody was really loving the art abroad the friends of my mom bought it and I was like my own art here that was in my house <laughs> and this is how it started so how I go about identifying the pieces um I just go mm-hmm. I look and I just get inspired yeah, so whatever catches your eye whatever catches my eye because I'm just a curator. I'm not an artist. I don't know how I'm not talented like that. I don't know how to paint <laughs> at all. So, um, but I have an eye for beautiful things. Mm-hmm. And that just goes to show because um, the art gallery has been growing within the last two years. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's a blessing. So I guess I have good eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my artists are really talented. That you know, maybe it's just because I'm talented artists that I work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. Actually, okay, so on the notion of you promoting local artists here in Europe, so you are somewhat disrupting the European art scene to a degree with uh, injecting it with diversity. Yeah. Uh, so how is that journey been going? really good it's been positive because one one the, the main thing is to diversify european art you know because these people are talented when i bring my art here and i do exhibitions or um i'm at festivals or events whatever people are amazed that this is actually a nobody because they always ask me who's the artist who's the artist and i tell them and they're like, oh, I don't know them. Where are they? I'm like, oh, then I start the story. This is a local African artist. You know, nobody knows them. Some of them don't even have an Instagram account, you know, so I have pictures I can show or videos while they're painting um, that I get sent. But but otherwise, they would never, never, nobody would never hear about these yeah. people. So um, this is why, how I'm trying to diversify because also whenever you see um, in the art scene, whenever they, the auctions time are during the summer, you know, when it's art week or art month, you never really see a known artist yeah, it's all the bidding for millions, people. you know? So it's like, I mean, last year there was an Ethio- Ethi- Ethiopian or Eurasian artist. Yeah, she, she, she managed to have a bid of 3.5 million of 3.6 million her, her art was sold for. So that wasn't amazing, but she was already known. She was not... Like somebody who just emerged out of nowhere, but it's still good. I was I was impressed, but yeah. So that's where I wanna bring more. To. Yeah, exactly, because it's just not fair. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Especially, I think there's a lot of talent within the African continent that's not being showcased because the either visibility is not there. They don't know how to market their own work. Yeah. So it just remains. Just that. Uh, so. And also being able to sell, because the other thing is I want these people to be able to live off their trade um, because some of them, this is the only job they know and this is all they have. Mm-hmm. Um, so fair pay is very important to me. So whatever they ask me to pay them, I pay them. And um, I want people to respect that, that, you know, art is art and an artist has to be able to live off that. No, this of is how the famous artists, you know, if they put a stamp price on it, you know, nobody argues. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want them to be arguing on um on the prices set by local African artists because talent is talent. And if you love something, and if it has, yeah, yeah, if it it has called you, you know, the work so that the person can, you know, enrich another person next time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all, I don't just pay for the sake of, oh, no, you'd be helping you. Yeah, yeah. So for the sake that you, they put work into it. Exactly. For, so, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's an important thing. So, uh, from your experience, how is inclusion and uh, in art and in culture crucial for in- interrogation, especially in, a, in European society? How is it important to for Africans to see ourselves in the things that we we showcase here in here in Europe? It is very important. That was also another reason why I started Bell Art Gallery because initially, when I was refurbishing my flat, I wanted to have more art that is from Africa or identifies African, whatever. Um, and being based in Berlin, it was really a challenge. So you go to um, Amazon or you walk around and you find some shops here and there or on the markets. And what you tend to see is um, these scary masks 
or just animal painting or just greenery. Mm. And I feel like there's more to African art. And moreover, this is the 21st century, so I want to see more contemporary things, you know. Yeah. Um, so that that is lacking here. So that's the inclusion I want to bring to showcase people that, hey, we do have contemporary art, we do have different in every kind of era. African artists were there yeah, yeah. and Africans were there. And um, so that's why my pieces are more impressions. If, if you have noticed, I don't know if you have, but I tend to have more um, human pieces, more face expressions, so that it's pretty obvious it's African. Yeah. You know? Once we have really established ourselves, I'll also work with artists who do more abstracts, you know, um, all those kind of things that don't showcase that it's an African mm -hmm. artist. Um, but you will be able to that. Yeah, it's, the presentation is as important yeah, as yeah. anything else. Uh, so to touch on now, to move on to your other venture, which is the cooking side. Yes. Uh, so what ignited that passion in terms of oh, cooking something I can do? Let me showcase it here too. Well, you know, um, I've been cooking, I've been cooking for um, a long time. So we are five of us in my family and I'm the first born. And Kitchen stuff, cooking and all of that was always my responsibility. So I started cooking when I was five. Mm -hmm. Back home when my mom used to go to work. So I'll have to help out. And then I'll have to do lunch sometimes, you know, make rice and those kind of things. So um and that's how it developed. And like I am also blessed to have met my great grandmother. So she taught me a few skills back in Uganda um to how to make our Ugandan food especially, you know, matoke, how to peel matoke, um, how to cook um, the groundnut sauce. So those are like my first memories when I think about cooking. Um, I know exactly how I cooked my very first rice. It came out like porridge mm -hmm. and burnt. <laughs> Just imagine, burnt porridge. <laughs> I don't even know what it did. And I remember that day my granddad also came by and I served that. He... he he just couldn't be. Not good. Not good at all. <laughs> but bless him, he ate it. I know he did. And, um, <laughs> because I remember it was bad. Yeah. I think rice is, some people can cook it and some people cannot. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm actually a master now of cooking rice. Nobody talks me. Okay. <laughs> and who knows? Then like, oh, Isabella's rice? Yeah, that's like. Well, yeah. Uh, my husband such. married me because of my rice. The rice? Yes. When he first time ate my rice, he said, I will marry you. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. So, um, yeah, so that's my first memory with food and cooking. And um, I think because I started on so early, and I think because I knew I was not good at it, because now in hindsight, when I think about it, I always perfectioned my cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, I cook better than my mom. I cook better than many people women in my family yeah. so i um, and they taught me cooking you know they taught me cooking so but i made sure i always perfected and also because i have four siblings under me two boys two girls they're all fussy eater yeah, yeah so i had to always cater for their special needs you know this one doesn't want onion this one doesn't want it too spicy this one doesn't want to see the tomatoes at all yeah. um so yeah that's how it it it's became, it became okay. yeah and, and um and then I started it as a side hustle because people were like, oh, Isabella, let me order Africans living here in Germany. Can you make me a party? Oh, can I, get, can I order some samosa? Um, so I started doing it as a side hustle on the side while I was working. And I did it for a long time, like six, eight years. And this year, 2024, going full time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, which is good. Like you've fully taken it into a, like a, a business now where you are fully committed, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it's a challenging commitment, but it, it's a good thing to do. To yeah. Do. So uh, on the concept of uh, immersion dining, which is kind of the thing that you do, mm -hmm. you're catering to immersion uh, Europeans and East African food. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about doing that? And how? what's your reception that you get when you do go to like places and they you cook this food and then they eat it for the first time? Yeah. Um, so at the moment I do because I don't have a restaurant yet. Mm -hmm. I cater for catering, private orders, private cooking. 
And um, what is very important to me is to understand my guests or my client. Mm. Um, so in my initial consultation, I definitely always make sure that I have this because I want to understand what they have in mind to their guests because it's different. You see, like when I cook for us Ugandans, we Ugandans were very conscious, healthy eaters by nature. Yeah. So like back home, our food is mainly boiled. We don't like too much oil and all those kind of things. So I know how to cook for Ugandan. Um, and then if it comes to the um, European people or even our Africans, so if it's Nigerian who's going to order our food, definitely I'm going to make sure it's spicy. A traditional cooking is not spicy in Uganda, <laughs> you know. So if they're going to order my fish, it's going to be spicy. If they're going to order the pilau with chicken, it's going to be spicy. If they order stew, I'll make sure it's spicy because I know this is their meat. Mm, yeah. And if it's European people, um, I tend to speak to them just to make sure I understand their level of knowledge of Africa. Some of them that tend to order my food have either been in Uganda or Kenya, so they understand it. And um, if they're, they're ordering to cater for completely with European people, usually it's I tend to cook European style, so um, I don't use many of our spices, but uh, um, if it's pilau, I'd make sure that, you know, the main ingredients are in there, but I make sure, you know, it's not overpowering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To them, yeah, um, some of them can't. <laughs> no, <laughs> not everyone can handle all spices. Sometimes you didn't even do anything. <laughs> it's a little bit now. Can you? It's just a pepper, like you know the pepper, the one they use themselves. So you're like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is why, um, how I try to, and I want to accommodate them because you know. If, I don't want to waste food and also don't want to waste people's time and money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if they order, I try to accommodate them as much as possible and make it a great experience without losing the touch though. Yeah, so yeah. like I'm not going to gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna come it. and start using sausages. I don't know, bread or no. Yeah. It's still going to be East African, but I'm going to try and accommodate their needs as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is kind of the cornerstone of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Spreading East African food keeping it East African as much as possible. And that's the diversity of and, and the beauty of East African food. You can really do a lot with our food mm -hmm. because we try to eat as natural to the source as possible. We don't over season anyway, you know. So, um, I mean, as modern people, yes, we do add additives, you know, but like I try to cook as natural as possible. So I, I just try to use the natural or in ingredients that we get so that you, you feed the flavors, even if I source my seasonings, you know, I try to use as the local ones back home, but the ones as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you, you really feel it because, you know, when you cook in Uganda, you smell the some tomato, you smell the, the onion, you smell everything, you taste everything. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to bring that one here, but yeah, it's the sourcing is the challenge, but I'm trying to cook as, organic and um traditional as, as possible. possible yeah yeah which is the main goal yeah so both your both your companies uh celebrate culture immersion how do you ensure that the essence of east african culture is, is respected respected and portrayed in both of the of those two ventures um with the gallery for example for now i'm working only with east african test local artist um and with the food I am trying to also bring the East African community together. So um, if I am at an event, for example, I try and post that to, diff to you know, the East African community so that they come because I just don't want to be that East African um, restaurant or gallery that only caters to, to the European. No, no, to, to the, the European. European, yeah. Because then, you know, this, my people will feel like, mm, that's only for the Muslims. <laughs> and also... <laughs> I don't, I don't want that. So I'm really, really working so hard to try. And bring it in even better. Yeah. Really yeah. Here in Europe. Yeah. And you know, also, how I do that, I know, you know, in our community, we don't earn that much. So, you know, when I go to those kind of events, I try to keep my costs low so that my people feel more invited um, to come and spend a little bit of money, but also meet and engage with other people. Like, I'm always so happy when I meet the people from WhatsApp communities. In real life events, and we all communicate, uh, you know, yeah, commune with each other and get to know each other, and all of that. It's it's nice, and we connect, and we advise, and we share, and yeah, we like good. to continue doing that. So yeah, so that's that's where I'm trying to focus on, not just to be a business of us. I get money, no, I'm trying to also bring my, my community. people together. Yeah, yeah, because for me also it's very. Um, 
pass or not because my son is 21 now and I want him to, he's in Europe, I cannot force him to go to Uganda now and uh, he's here for now. So I want him even being here, being able to live and, and you know, emerge in the East African culture yeah. and the people and know them and understand them. You know, every time when we go to Uganda, Kenya, it's like new to him. Yeah. You know, so that uh, he is, yeah. And also knowing the food and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, I think preserving culture, it's a big thing, especially for the next, big, gener- yeah. next generation, more or less, because then your culture is who you are. Yeah. It's your identity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And I'm, I'm, I don't want my son to lose it because, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we touched on some of the challenges that you've had. Uh, and as a woman of color and, and a woman in general, there's this big thing of if you go to like uh, pitching events, there's this invisibility, you're not seen. Or the questions that are presented to you are different to the questions that will be posed to male uh, entrepreneurs. How would, what advice would you give to inspire like women in general in terms of how to maneuver um, in those environments? Mm, the number one thing I would say, don't give up because I have been to many of those and I always get frustrated and I'm like, yeah, I'll never go again. I just feel like don't give up because, you know, once we start giving up, nothing will ever change, right? Yeah. So um, whenever we are there, we have a chance to to speak. And you may touch one or two people. Somebody may listen carefully here and there, and next time they may do better. So I just feel like um, definitely don't give up. Don't feel down, mm-hmm. you know. Um, just keep going, you know, to those events. Um, if you have somebody who has some kind of um, influence, definitely speak up. Yeah. You know, don't be um, scared for of retaliation or other comments or no, speak up, you know, as professional, as polite as you can, but definitely speak up and keep going and keep speaking up yeah. because it's the only way, you know, um, people, they, it may backfire, but, you know, me and other women like that person will see you, will feel encouraged. When I go to this kind of spaces and I see um, a, a black woman on a panel or, or, or introducing herself or pitching or whichever, I always make sure I'll go and inspire them and just cheerlead them and be like, hey, amazing, you know, like, yeah, well done. Keep going, you know, even if I don't understand what she was talking about because it's not my field, keep going because we need this, you know. And what I see, there's other, so many black girls behind me, behind us, in my generation, other people now behind us that are up and coming. You know, sometimes I go to these events where there's young black girls and they just don't know what to do, mm. you know. And I think, well, and I'm like, that's true when you're here based in Berlin. Which inspiration do you have? You know, they'll tell you, oh, if I was in America, there's this one, there's that one, there's this, you know, I could do this, I could do that. And it is true. There's so many things lacking. So um, I just only um, say, if you have the, if you have the privilege to be in those spaces, speak up, continue going because it helps others behind you. So yeah, yeah. And people are inspired by looking at other people. Yeah, and seeing. I'm always amazed when I go to these events and I see all oh, the head of diversity is a black woman in this company, and I'm like, oh okay. Or um, the the founder of this is a black woman. I'm like, oh, that's you. You so many are behind. They they are really important people, and we don't know them yeah. unless you go there. And you're like, oh yeah, wow. Yeah, the visibility thing is it's, yes. it's a big thing. Yeah. All of a sudden, you should have like, need, needs to be more tackled on. Okay, people are given platforms to showcase what they're doing more than anything else. Because there's people doing great things, but then they're not. That's also them, another so. one. That needs to be definitely tackled on giving us spaces where we can be seen, yeah. especially in Germany. That is lacking. I mean, if you do the research, it may look like it is happening mm-hmm. because governments like to commit and they have given more funding to women. And it's true, you know, apparently this year there's 20% more funding for women entrepreneurs. And then you go to look at what was funded last year. It lacks diversity even within the women group. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like... <laughs> Where's the difference you yeah. Yeah. Because they're women. So still, you know, there are women too who are not seen at all. So, um, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I think one of the major things is having women in the decision making rooms where these things are being sort of made. Where if they are there, they know what's happening. Like have different voices in the rooms, yeah. not just one group yeah. making the decision, which yeah. is another issue that needs to be somewhat yeah. pointed towards. Yeah, but you know, I'm also going to be positive because a lot is happening, mm. a lot is changing. There's really a lot of opportunities. You do have to be out there. This is why I'm saying don't give up. Networking is important. Be out there, be seen, you know. It is really, really tiring, but it's the only way at the moment. Mm. And once you're there, you see Ah, okay. Things are there, but many things are underground. Many things are not really promoted as they should be promoted. Uh, many things don't even come out. People will never even find out about it. So things are happening. That's on the positive side. But yeah, you have to go and find out. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have to. Sometimes you have to do the, the legwork. Yeah, and this one you have to do a lot of legwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've spoke about visibility and people being seen. We're going to touch on as we reach at the end of uh, what what advice would you give to inspire to women or women of color that are inspiring to be entrepreneurs that are like I have this idea but I don't really know what to do. Uh, I'm I'm stuck. What what advice would you impart on them? Well, if somebody's stuck. That means then they've already overcome the major thing, which I feel like is uh, to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So if you're stuck, um, just keep going. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because it's definitely worth it. Whatever idea you have and you feel like, oh, it's been done before. Oh, who's going to want this? Or whatever negative thoughts, you know, you have in your mind. Forget that. Just keep going. You know, work on yourself. Keep pushing. Keep turning up. Um, Because we've all been there. I wake up every single day and I'm like, man, I come from a corporate path. Last year I was working like the past 10 years and I had a career. So I'm like, maybe it's not too late to just go and apply for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boss last week messaged me, you know, maybe I should just... Hit him up and get you in yeah, you know? and get something. Oh, you know, you have those thoughts in your head, but definitely, definitely do not give up every idea that you have is is important is needed um especially here in germany i mean i've met so many black women entrepreneur in the early starting stage you know they just developed the idea and i'm like oh, i've thought of it wow and it's a really impressive thing so i really hope that they they do push forward um and 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 make and make it make it a business make it a, a living I don't know, but my advice is definitely don't give up. Um, even if you if you hear scary things, I mean, I am blessed. I live in Berlin. I've met women who live in those villages outside in Germany, those places, and it's more challenging for them. Um, so I understand that. But definitely don't give up. It's yeah. number one thing, and the other thing is network as much as you can. You know, no matter what um the person you think they are the job they're doing whatever but you don't know who they know yeah most of my um my 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 clients are like from somebody who knows me you know people will be like oh receive this um your website from so and so from that other i'll be like wow most of the opportunities are it's always like word of mouth everything so like Definitely, definitely network, you know, build a brand, build a personality so that people know who you are. People think, oh, who are you? <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's important, you know, so that um, the right people want to be around you and also people want to for to give you to give you you as a reference forward, you know, yeah. so um, and give you opportunities. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, definitely network and don't give up. Okay. Yeah. So, so beyond beyond the some of the issues we spoke about, like access to capital, what kind of support systems are crucial for fostering a successful led uh, woman business, especially like a, an ecosystem? What would you be like? Oh, if as women we can get together, maybe build this. This could be something we could build on upon. Um, there was a platform with everything entrepreneurship mm -hmm. for black women. <laughs> Hey, I am looking for um, a tax advisor specifically for this my business niche. Where can I go? 
Oh, that. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's something that's more accessible that gives you like this is a direction you, you know, can like right now. I have to work with a lawyer. I have to work with a tax advisor. I have to work with this. I have to work with that. There's so many, and they're all different. Mm-hmm. And they only answer one question. And yeah. then with that question, with that answer, I have to go to another person. And be like, okay, this is what I want to do. But then this. So it's like complicated, and sometimes people don't um, because Germany bureaucracy here is really. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's well known. <laughs> yeah, so um, you, I, I want to do things right. People should wanna want to do things yeah. right, you know. And in order to do things right, you have to find out so much information. So I wished there was this one platform <laughs> where somebody experienced that already, or they know how this works mm-hmm. for black women, especially because, like, I'm working also with um businesses in Africa because we're gonna have a gallery in Uganda and Kenya also, you know? Yeah. So like how do you connect that? You know, like which um rights form and like which titles do you do you have to get which text code and all of these kind of things is a little bit uh challenging, more challenging than I thought. Yeah. So um I wish there was somebody yeah that so, can give you the very to the right way. Exactly, yeah. And in that field because then they that means they're specialized working with people working with people in Africa, you know, they specialize working with minority groups. So um, that's what is lacking. Right now, you, there is those platforms, absolutely. But they're based on startups that are uh, invested in 100 million and more or 15 million and more. I'm not doing all of that. Yeah. You know, or Berlin is now big on becoming this mini Silicon Valley. So um, all of that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, you know, so they're they're focusing more on those. So there is those platforms out there. There's no networks, everything. See it, and I think it's great. But yet, yeah, this one is lacking. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that that's that's a thing. I think they you have to create more of a platform that caters to different businesses, not just the tech uh, orientated businesses. Yeah. So yeah, so a platform like that would be great. Yeah. So as we ne- we come to the end, uh, what are what are your future plans for both of your businesses and what, what what's like your what are what inspires you next? What's the next thing that you look forward to? Well this year I definitely wanna open the restaurant mm-hmm. a physical shop um or space and a physical space for the gallery. So that's the inspiration, motivation goal mm-hmm. for twenty twenty four. Yeah, and then grow, you know what, more with the African community. And also want to be more involved, like um, put myself more out there because I want to share my experience with the people because there's so many of us struggling looking for information, just information. Yeah. Where can I go? How does this work? You know? So that's also another one. Put myself out there and help my brothers and sisters, you know, to find their feet um, yeah. with the little experience I have so far. Mm. Um, but, you know, together, the more we come together, we grow and then we can share more. So, those are the three goals. Three goals. That's good. Uh, so, where can people like find you? People are looking for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> we have Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, for the restaurant, it's Sorrel Brasserie, and um, for the gallery, it's Bella Dot Art Gallery. Yeah. Hey. Uh, and then so from there you find the links of the website. Of the website, yeah. I'll, I'll add them. I'll add them to the article. I'll write. Yeah, because yeah, so many. <laughs> there, there's so many channels. It's like, ooh. and each of them has their individual logins. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, that's it from us. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for the interview. It was great. Uh-huh.